Welcome back to the channel. I'm Erin, where I teach tips, tools, and tutorials for virtual assistants. This week, we're learning a little bit more about how to do file organization for clients. Now, organizing files sounds simple. You're like, I look at a client's Dropbox and I make it neat. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that even though this is one of the most common task requests, file organization, it is often one of the hardest ones to do. And that's because you might log into somebody's Google Drive or log into a client's Dropbox and see that they have 10 years worth of files. This has actually happened to me, a decade worth of files that were unorganized. How do you start? Where do you even begin? How do you possibly tackle folders that are unnamed, have no names, you have no clue what's relevant, you don't know if anything needs to be trashed? It's a real kerfuffle. So this week, I'm gonna throw you right into the wolves um, because I'm not even going to give you a how-to or some tips. I'm going to give you a prompt. So the purpose of this prompt is that I am now your client and you are my virtual assistant. And my prompt is I have so many files and documents floating around my Google Drive and I have no idea what to do with them. Help me, virtual assistant, help me. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to pause this video. How would you actually organize my files? Now, it's a little hard for me to, to give you this task because I can't actually give you access to my cluttered Google Drive because those are my files and also everyone here watching on YouTube, all 20,000 of you, if you all got access to my Google Drive, it would be chaos. I can't have everyone organizing all of those files. So what I've done is just created a very general Dropbox of what you might see when you log into your client's drives. So pause this video, take a couple minutes, grab a scrap of paper, and actually draw out how you would organize my Dropbox. If this was my Dropbox, how would you do it? How many folders would I have? How many subfolders I have? Would I have any subfolders? I don't know, it's totally up to you because you're my virtual assistant. A few moments later. So how did you guys organize my Dropbox? I'm really curious, I actually really wanna know. So if you could go down to the comments right now and tell me, did you create folders? What are their names? Did you create subfolders? Did you rename any of my PDFs? I wanna know all the details and uh, let's get into a couple steps for how to make file organization better and faster as a virtual assistant. Now, the first thing we always wanna do, and I realized that I just forgot to include that slide, um, so my bad everyone, is you always want to connect with your client first and talk about their goals. If you're familiar with any of my other training videos, you know that almost every task training, it always starts with what are your client's goals and how can you be on the same page? So oftentimes you can you know, look through a client's folders and I'll give you the example for my client who had 10 years worth of miscellaneous um, documents. It was insanity. And I said to him, do you need all 10 years of this data? And they thought about it and they said, you know what, you can trash um, these couple of folders or anything related to this old business that I no longer have, or you can throw away anything older than five years, or you can throw any videos away because they're taking up too much clutter. So sometimes clients will have stipulations for things that you can throw away, which is great because if you know something that you can trash, your first step then is to go through and start clearing out some of those documents so that you're working with less stuff. The second thing we always wanna do is talk about folders and subfolders. So creating a system of folders and subfolders is usually the best thing you wanna do for your clients. We don't want any miscellaneous PDF or Word docs or notes floating around in their documents. So everything has to be in a nice, neat little folder. A folder, for example, and you saw my example, I had a random PDF 2024 taxes. So a main folder then that tells me is that I would want to create one folder with one theme, and that would be taxes. And then I want to create subfolders. Those are little tiny folders that live inside the main tax folder. So that when your client clicks on taxes, they will see other folders that are neatly labeled things like 2023 taxes, 2022 taxes. And you might even have subfolders within that subfolder. For example, in your 2023 taxes subfolder, you might have other folders. It might be K1s, it might be 1099s, it might be 
uh, W2s. You know, it's just you're basically putting together folders of like material, of related documents. So first step that's always going to make your life easier and make your client breathe a little easier is folders and subfolders. The next thing you really want to focus on is a naming schema. I call this naming consistency. So it just sucks the life out of, um, these two are related by the way, but naming consistency is great because you want to start creating a system for your client that is relevant, that makes sense, that's easy to read and understand. If you as the VA could go through your client's folders and you could label documents that were so clear that your client never even had to open the document because they're like, oh, I know what that is, then you have done your job. For example, I have logged into clients' drop boxes before and I see documents labeled one, two, three. You're like, what is that? Or I've seen documents labeled cats. You're like, what is that? <laughs> and then you open it and you find out it's like vet details for their pet. If you can be specific, let's just use that vet cat example, by the way. If you can be specific, and um, I'm going to assume your client has been to the vet more than once. If you can come up with a consistent naming schema, so it's like cat vet visit January 2023, and then the next file, cat vet visit March 2023, and then the next file, cat vet visit July 2024. Like if you can just keep a consistent naming schema, that's going to be really helpful to your clients because they're going to better understand your system and you're going to be able to find documents a heck of a lot faster. Related to that, you definitely want to have a logical naming convention. So don't make up any cute or smart or weird shortcuts that you're like, this will, I'll remember that because I guarantee two months from now, you won't remember your shortcuts. So uh, using that cat example again, if instead of vet, you wanted to do CVV for cat vet visit, CVV January 2023, later on down the road, your client might be like, hey, I need to get all my cats visits so I understand how their health is going. And you go look through the documents and you're like, dang, I can't find any of their vet stuff. What did I do with it? That's because you named it CVV. So don't, don't do shortcuts. You're not going to remember it and neither is your client. You want to make it clear, so clear that you know exactly what the document consists of without even opening it. Another step I want you to really, really consider doing when you are offering organizational services as a VA is regularly checking for updates to make sure that your system is working. Your system only works if both you and your client can maintain it. If neither one of you can maintain the system, it means the system is not good. It means there's a breakdown somewhere. It means it's not simple. So you need to make sure that you're constantly looking through the folders to make sure that everything is still neat and nice and organized. And you also want to call trash regularly. So if your client did give you any stipulations early on, like, hey, you can just trash all videos. Next time you're looking through their Dropbox and you see a couple new videos that they dropped in, throw them in the trash. Make sure that you're not cluttering for clutter's sake. We always want to make sure that we're keeping it nice and tidy, just as if we were cleaning your house regularly. So this week's video was pretty simple. Um, and again, it's a little hard because I can't necessarily give you access to files, but hopefully you've taken away a couple key steps. And the next time a client says to you, hey, can you organize my digital files? Come back to this video and remember to align with your client's goals Ask them what things can be thrown away. Ask them what things are important to them. Should you star any folders for quick access? Uh, then remember to come up with folders, subfolders that are clear, and a clear naming schema that allows you and your client to know exactly what you're clicking on without actually opening the document. All of these things are going to help you both stay really organized, and I think your client's going to feel really happy about the organizational system that you're building for them. So how do you guys do? I want to know in the comments. And also, thank you so much for watching this week's video. Uh, next week, we are going to be practicing meeting planning. And this task is a little bit different than setting meetings, uh, setting up meetings for clients. So if you've never done calendar management before and you've never set client meetings or calls on a calendar, check out this video that's popping up right now. Um, practice the calendar settings and then Join me again next week when we talk about running meetings, running agendas, taking notes, and all that good stuff.